KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that needs no listener behind. Whatever Works with Sam Works and Kyle Kerrigan. Thank you for listening. Uh, this is KCAA 1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM, the stations that leave no listener behind. Hey, you guys like that intro, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that was a little different. That was pretty good. You know, today we have a, <clears throat> a special guest, a dear friend of mine, Kyle. He's on here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. I got replaced. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I, I was actually really excited to hear that intro. It was really good. You guys that was really did an good. awesome job. Uh, yes, yeah, so you guys are listening to Whatever Works on KCAA 1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM. Uh, let's jump right into it. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's sponsor time. It's sponsor time. Our sponsor is snjradio.com. Mm-hmm. No negative news, no politics, just feel good music. By the way, guys, I just want to let you guys know, I don't know how many episodes we're on. Um, a couple hundred, to be honest, but it is going to be Kyle and I's two year, second year anniversary. Two years, wow! In the next couple weeks. Yep. Uh, he came in for the Halloween event. Halloween event, 2021. Which is so crazy because, you know, what a perfect time to get a new co-host. I mean, not really because it's like it's important, right? It's like during Halloween, we're having a whole mashup, <laughs> but. You know, we, we performed really well, and actually yeah. it was Kyle's first time being on the radio. Yeah. And tonight we actually have Ashley here, and this is her first time, right? Yes, my first time. Yes, and she was like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, she was super nervous, you know, yeah. and, and Kyle was trying to warm her up a little bit, and he was like, you know, the first time I came on the radio, I was terrified, right? Yeah. Let, let's, let's talk about that real quick. So... What do you mean by terrified? Is it because you're on the radio? Is it because you have this imaginary audience in front of you? Why does that terrify you to be on the radio? Well, actually, I won't even use the word terrified. Okay. Yeah. So I want to backtrack on that. Um, The first time I was in the air actually was a week before uh, the Halloween event 2021. And what kind of helped me was I got a call from Timmy, who everyone knows, Sam's brother. So I got a call from Timmy. He's like, hey, I'm going to be on the radio in an hour. You want to come on? I was like, sure. (laughs) Because it's not unlike Timmy to bring me into these, like, random things. (laughs) And now all of a sudden, I'm somewhere I don't want to be. So I'm just like, okay. And so I was like, all right, yeah. No, I'll I'll join uh, uh, Timmy. So it's Timmy, uh, Chris, Pauly Boy. And Sam was in the control room that day. And so at first I was I didn't want to talk. I was really nervous. And all of a sudden, I was the only one talking. Timmy didn't, Timmy wasn't talking, Polly Boy. Oh. And I was like, what the heck? Imagine <laughs> if he didn't come on the radio show. <laughs> it would just be crickets for about an hour. I was like, Timmy. I was I was getting these guys trying to rile him up. Uh-huh. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And then yeah. after the show, um, Kyle, he actually volunteered. He's like, hey, if you ever need a co-host, yep. I was like, all right, that, that's pretty good. And you know what? We, we've we grown so much from yeah. two years ago. It's actually that's crazy. How it's actually insane. It? You know, and so now it's Ashley's first time on the radio, and she did a really good job for the introduction. I'm yeah, super proud was, of her. Yeah, that was a really good intro. And um, if you guys don't know who Ashley is, well, that is tonight's the night where you find out who she really is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Ashley, go ahead and introduce yourself and um, talk a little bit about you. Give us some background and what do you do? So, I'm Ashley. I Hi, Ashley. <laughs> 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 so, um, I am pretty average, pretty normal. I go to school um, here at Crafton and then I work at Whiskey Republic. 
No, she's actually okay. one of the, she's the prettiest girl that works at Whiskey Republic. So if you guys are curious what she looks like, you can either go online right now and watch us live on kcaradio.com or you can just go to Whiskey Republic, pop by and say hello and be like, "Hey, I heard you on the radio." And yeah. um, you know, go from there. So what do you So what is Whiskey Republic and what do you do there? So I am a server at Whiskey Republic. So I'm not a bartender. I don't make the drinks. I just bring them out to you guys with okay. a pretty face and a smile. Okay. And um, Whiskey Republic is a new country bar. We're actually about to have our one year anniversary oh, um, on the 1st of uh, October coming up here. And we do a bunch of fun things. We um, have game night, we have line dancing and karaoke night. We always have a DJ on Fridays and a live band on Saturdays. Okay, and where is Whiskey Republic? Um, it is in Redlands. Do you know the address? Um, 101 Redlands Boulevard, hey, I believe. Good. Oh, yeah, I good believe. job. It's 101 East Redlands Boulevard. I looked it up just in case. <laughs> good job. Yeah, I okay. actually, <clears throat> I've been there a couple times. I got 86. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Almost. <laughs> he's like, that's how I met Ashley. She kicked me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yes and no, kind of. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did meet Ashley um, before that, but I didn't know she worked there. And I came in one time, and I was with my some. I think it was with Isaac, one of my boys. And then I see her, and I was like, "Hey, that's her." You know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm with my buddy, and so I was already having fun, you know, feeling good. And I was pretty confident in myself. So I was like, she was working. I was like, hey, come dance with me. She's like, what? I was like, come dance with me. <laughs> she said, what? And she said, okay. And then, uh, you know, the rest is history. So I'm, I'm really um, glad. That and you know, how long ago was that? I was in, oh. Jan that was in January. Yeah, January. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, it's funny. I actually, here I'm, I'm embarrassed myself. I actually asked her out to like hang out you know you know uh -huh. after whiskey whatever and i got her number or whatever and then she's like yeah we should hang out before she goes to canada because she likes traveling okay and she's like, oh i'm sometime in like february or whatever and i never hit her up he wow. flaked on me guys i wouldn't say <laughs> flake but uh, yeah oh, he I did. did so then you know fast forward after february i go to the branding iron which you guys already know I like branding iron. I like line dancing. Yeah. But now Whiskey Republic might be my new place. I don't know. Okay. Um, I like them both. Anyways, I see Ashley there. I'm walking by and I was like, ah, I'm just going to walk by. He just walked right by me. Pretending like you didn't see me. And she put me on the brake. She said, Err. she's like, Sam. And I was like, oh, hey, you. <laughs> Yo. She's like, the guy who flaked on me. I was like, ah, come on. I didn't flake on you. I was like, let me take you out this weekend. <laughs> oh, and redemption. So, yeah. yeah I was, Shot my shot, you know, missed. Anyways, I'm just kidding. But, yeah, so whiskey is actually really fun. If you guys never been there, um, every day they have some something going on. Something so going on we're either day. giving away prizes on Monday. You get Ooh. to spin a wheel, and then you get um, discounts, and you get prizes. And then um, game night, you can win gift cards. That's pretty fun. I work on game night if you guys want to stop by. Okay, what games do you guys play? So we have trivia. And then we have um, a cornhole and a beer pong tournament. So you have to win the tournament to get the gift cards. But wow. trivia, we have three rounds. So then we give away three different gift cards for that too. I don't want two my own horn, but I'm undefeated at trivia. I'll, really? Trivia? I thought you were gonna, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say something about beer pong. You know, I'm pretty good at beer pong. But yeah, I seen you. Shoot. I'm yeah, I'm not the best, but I'm pretty good. But trivia is where you're. Tri trivia is my. So I used to watch Jeopardy every night for eight years straight. Oh, wow. So, like, <laughs> that's my thing. He puts it on repeat. He falls asleep to it. He's <laughs> dreaming about it. Yeah. He's like, one day. <laughs> he's going to be on He's gonna be on trivia. That's pretty yeah. cool. So, I, why I have I that. never seen you on a Tuesday? Oh, well, I, I, I work in the morning, early morning during the week. Mm -hmm. So, I'll have to, like, what time is trivia on Tuesdays? Um, trivia starts at 8 o'clock. Okay. It ends, like, around what? Um, trivia, it just depends. We have three rounds, but we normally try to have it end by nine o'clock, um, about there. Cause then that's when we start the cornhole and the beer pong. I'm about to come in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, Ashley and I, we went up to Oakland. What was it last week? Yes. It was last Sunday. Last Sunday yeah. That's funny. <laughs> last Sunday. 
And uh, we're up in Oak Glen, and we actually played cornhole with a couple of our buddies, and we won that. We won, we won yeah? the game. It was pretty fun. We had a great Congrats. time. Congrats. Good job. Honestly, you should go, Kyle, because... To they Oakland? Ha- yeah. I love Oakland. Dude, they have so many good things. They do. One of the guys um, who is going to be on our show, uh, not maybe not this week, possibly if I can fit him in, because we have we have Jake Asai on the 8th, right? On the 8th. That's a couple weeks away. Sorry for the pause, guys. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Here we go. <laughs> Joe. Joe passing <laughs> notes like we're in 8th grade. Look at that. Amazing. Yeah, but you're going to like that one. Huh? I don't know, Sam. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll definitely let you know, Joe. Yeah, let you know on the break. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so Oakland, you know, they're really trying to do stuff for everyone, you know, for the kids, for adults and stuff. And where we went, there was cornhole. There was they had little hammocks, you know. It's a little bar area. Plus, you yeah. can get like food and stuff. Like the kids were there, and they had this humongous slide on the side of the hill. I remember, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they I put the little so, tubes yeah. on there, and you just go down. Dude, I never seen that slide. Really? <laughs> I guess I haven't been in Oak Glen in a long time, but yeah, yeah. I have, I have some videos of that. Um, I actually think Ashley won. It was me, Ashley, and our buddy Isaac. We went up there, and for three people, it was twenty bucks. All together. Oh, wow, okay. And it was pretty cool. You know, they, they have a little escalator um, ramp thing, and it just takes you all the way to the top, so you don't have to, you know, make your way through this big old hill. And then they lather up the or soak up or soap up the bottom of your tube, and then they just push you down the slide, and then there's, like, a little, you know, thing where they catch you. It's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we played cornhole. We did... Um, big Connect Four. Oh, yeah. oh. She needs to work on that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just kidding. Oh man. And then, he cheats. And then oh, we, and then we raced on the the slide. And then of course there's like random peacocks everywhere. Oh right? yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was she wanted to take pictures with the peacock. It was kind of funny. And then around the corner there is like a a school nearby, right? Yeah. Well, right next to the school there is this. It's a cute little shop. It. it I don't even know what's in the shop because I'm not there to go to that shop. In the back, though, there's, like, a cigar area. So it was just people from around Yukaipo. They go up to Oak Glen, and then, you know, they just puff on cigars, and they talk to each other. They communicate, and they just okay. have a good time. They play really good music, oldies music, and you're, just, you're outside in Oak Glen, Beautiful weather, and it's just like, it's super nice. I actually took my dad up there for my birthday. Okay. And I never smoked with my dad or anything like that, but this year, I was like, all right, me and my brother and my dad, I was like, you guys are going to follow me. And they're like, where are we going? I was like, don't worry about it, because I don't want them to reject, you know? So I was like, you're coming up with me? We're going to Oakland. And JC and my dad were like, okay, Oakland's fun. Cool. What are we going to do there? I don't know. So we go up, we go to the shop, and we walk in the back, and I was like, and it was National Chess Day, by the way. Oh, uh, your birthday? Uh, it was um, It was actually, my birthday's on the second. This was on the first. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, he, he's like, what are we doing here? I was like, we're going to smoke cigars and we're going to play some chess. And my dad gave me knuckles. I was like, all right, cool. I got his, his acceptance. So we went in there. Um, and this guy, he has a huge room and it's a humidor. And it has like hundreds, if not thousands of cigars. And, and he's a tobacconist, so he he knows almost everything about all his cigars that he has. Yeah, probably. And yeah. he was like, "Are you got, are you more of a mild, dark, da da da?" And then um, you know the sizes, and he's like, "This one has more of an oaky taste. This one has more of like a chocolate taste. If you want something sweeter." And it was so funny because JC he doesn't do anything. <clears throat> so when we're um, puffing the cigars, JC had like two puffs. He was done. <laughs> he, yeah. was, he was lightheaded. He was drained out. He's like, I can't do this. He put his little cigar out, and then me and my dad were playing mm-hmm. chess. And I learned how to play chess when I was probably five, six years old. It took me until my birthday to beat my dad. However, I told my dad, I was like, I don't think you, you gave me your A game. You know, that's right. I was there. Yeah, I was, was kind of when he asked me. Yeah, and I was said like, I wasn't. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but he was uh, really shocked by that. He was. You know? He was yeah. like, I can't believe you beat me. I was like, I can't believe you quit because I got it's it's a long story. I got him to split. But anyways, yeah. So Oakland, they're 
they're changing it up. They're having more social activities up there. It's it's really nice still, um, and they have camels. You saw you saw the camels. Remember that? I didn't see the camels. I just saw the peacocks. I did not see any camels. He's horrified. <laughs> Bro, we, were, we were all talking about the camels. There was like two or three of them. Cam oh, man. You get to ride camels up in No Glen. I want to ride a camel. I did see the ca camels. They had yeah. saddles on. Yes, yes. <laughs> they had yeah. sandals on? S saddles. Oh, I they said sandals. <laughs> I was like, what? Yes, they had saddles. So, <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, I advise e everyone to go to Oakland and just check it out. You know? Yeah. I, I took the video of us going on the slide and I sent him to my brother who has a bunch of kids. I was like, you have to go here. And I guess he already went, which was, I was like, all right, boo. However, I don't think they ever rode camels before. I never rode a camel before, you know. I never so. rode a horse. You never what? rode a horse? I never rode a horse. Oh, man. But I would definitely want to ride a camel before I ride a horse. Before you ride really? a horse? You're yeah. You're going to start with the camel? Yeah, why not? I I feel like a camel is a good st stepping stone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, when I was 14 until I pretty much turned 18, because that's when I stopped sneaking out and doing stuff, um, I always wanted to ride llamas. And the reason why I always wanted to ride llamas is because there's a house that has llamas in their yard. And I wanted to one night just sneak into their yard, <laughs> hop on a llama or an alpaca or whatever you want to call it, and just ride one. That, that's always that was like my dream for like five years. <laughs> I was like every time I drove by that house and I saw the llamas, I was like, I'm gonna ride you guys one day. <laughs> and then I just got older and I was like, it's not. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll probably get spit on, you know, nipped at Kit. or yeah, or anything, you know. Yeah. So it's just not really my forte <laughs> anymore. But anyway, so okay, so you work at whiskey, and then where do you work at now, Kyle? What do you do? Top notch. It's actually a thousand feet away that way. Thousand feet. And what, what is that? It's a catering company for schools, mm. uh, the school districts. Um, well, actually, not for the school district. It's for, like, uh, specialized contracts for, um, like, I guess, private schools or, like, um, just, like, charter schools. Mm. And so I'm there from 5.30 a.m. every day. I'm usually out by, like, 4.30 a.m. or p.m. Every day, yeah. You guys, that that's insane. Five thirty every day. Yeah. You're not, are you a morning bird? No. Oh man. <laughs> I gotta be in bed like around seven or eight. Mm. I see that. So, yeah. yeah. So after after this, you're going to sleep. Basically. After this, I'm going to bed. Nice. Yeah. You gotta work tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? So <laughs> Ashley and I, we're actually, hopefully, if she can do it, um, we're gonna be making authentic chicken masala. Oh. For people who need food. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I met this lady at her house because, anyways, I broke her pipes, whatever. So we started talking. <laughs> I fixed her pipes. <laughs> and then we sat down, and she's she's from India. And uh, we started talking, and she, she fed me dinner one night. And I was like, oh, wow. Did you make this? You know? And she's, <laughs> like, she's like, no, Costco. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But then we started talking, and then she's like, what I do make – um, Indian food, like every once in a while, for for example, like the Red Cross or something. Oh, that's cool. You know, for for set free ministry or something. You know, people who don't can't afford food, she would go in the kitchen and she would make a lot of whatever meals she's making, and then she packages them and then she hands them out. Okay. And I was, I would love to do that. And she got all excited. She's like, really? I was like, yeah. And then she's like, I'm making chicken marsala, which is an Indian dish. Yeah. And I was like, I would love to help, you know. I mean, I get to help feed people, which is great. I'm doing the world a service, which is awesome. Also, I get to learn how to cook authentic Indian food, you know. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah. And obviously, I get to have some, too, because if I don't, I'm going to be mad, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I, I think we're doing it this uh, next Thursday, week. Thursday, you said? Thursday, possibly, yeah. I think it's Thursday. Oh, that's Thursday. But it's out in Riverside, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean... I actually thought of that idea because of what you do now. Like, you're making food for people. Yeah. And then when she brought that up, I was like, oh, I want to make food for people, too. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay. I mean, what's what's better than helping other people? Yeah, exactly. World? You know? So I kind of I wanted to get into that. And there's a lot of things that I want to do. Like, the older I get, the more I want to help, you know, our community and all yeah, of our I, stuff. Yeah, I've know? always been the same way, too, so. 
And the best thing about that is, you know, the people who help are usually um, not just good people, but people who are, are important to the community. You know, they have some type of higher job or higher standard of living and all this stuff. And you can really network, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's, and it's not like your first impression is like, oh, this guy's, you know, he's selfish. Like, oh, you meet this guy for the first time, and he's like, oh, he's helping the community. Like, da, da, da. That already builds that trust. Then that, oh, okay, that starts yeah. the networking. And then you feel good about yourself anyways. Yeah. You know, so I have never – have you done any community service, both of you guys? Yeah. What have you done, Kyle? Well, I was in Namibia for five weeks, mm -hmm. and so we did, um, I helped build up this orphanage, so we helped build this wall, and then we pre-painted the wall. See, I would, I would love to yeah. do something like that, too. It's, it's amazing. It's such a great feeling, and it's amazing, and I miss all those kids, too, even though they, they like, make fun of you. <laughs> 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 it's like, what? But, like, that's, that's their way of having fun, and so it was cool. Like, Is there a, is there a comment? Anyways, what about you, Ashley? What community services have you done? Um, so I volunteered at Lighthouse for the Blind. So that was really fun. It was a really interesting experience. So um, I wouldn't make the food personally, but um, I helped um, serve it up. So I would either be putting it on the plates, you know, getting just all of the plates ready, or I would be walking the people to um, go and get their plates. So oh, okay. I would, yeah, like they would like hold on to my shoulder and I would um, guide them to go get their plates. And then some mm. of them I would just take them to them. Um, but the people that you would meet there, like it was just, um, it definitely gave you a different perspective on it life. It does, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's actually, well, two things I want to bring up. One is, um, <clears throat> so... You know, they're trying to help blind people see now. Well, they always try to, but, like, they're beginning to now, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And when I was in high school, we had a, a couple blind kids. Yeah. And a scientist or an engineer uh, came in one day, and he went to that class, and he asked them, he's like, hey, if we were able to help you see, would you want that? In my head, I was like, that's a no-brainer. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. these people want to see color. They want to see life. They want to see yeah. everything birds chirping you know their mom's face you know and so i think it was like one maybe two but one for sure that he said no he was like then i would have to like almost he would have to adapt yeah to seeing things you know like he's already he's he's like 16 you know he's been blind for 16 years he knows how to move he knows how to walk around and stuff blindly and yeah. he's adjusted his life to like be okay with that yeah you know he came to terms with his blindness and now someone's in a sense trying to take that away yeah you know mm -hmm. and i when he when i heard that i was like that's so crazy that's crazy to think yeah well and if that's the only thing they've ever known then they don't really it's okay um, yeah it's okay like yeah. they don't you don't they're okay with who they are yeah. right exactly and so I thought that was pretty crazy. And then the other thing I was going to say, um, one of my favorite shows, excuse me, uh, The Peaky Blinders. Okay. That's a great show. It's a great show. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while, so I forgot his name. But um, he's he's that, that Jewish guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And so one of the Italian mafia bosses, he went to go talk to him. And he has his eyes closed, and he's like, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> and he was like, I, I got one more minute being blind. And it's a practice that he would be blind for at least, I think is it, it's either 10 minutes. I, I, I want to say 10 minutes a day or every Sunday to have your eyes closed to like, be in people's positions of life, like people who are blind. Yeah. So you, you're grateful for what you have. You know, so this guy comes up, he's trying to talk business and he has his eyes closed. He's like, look at me when I'm talking to you. He's like, I got one more minute. He's like, what time is it? And then the guy was like, oh, it's, you know, whatever. He's like, I got 60 more seconds. So go ahead, you know, say what you got to say. But, when I'm, you know, and then he stopped him because it was time's up and he opened his eyes. He's like, all right, so what do you want? You know, yeah. <laughs> but like the whole purpose is to put your, you know, feet in other people's shoes. Yeah. You know, which is like, that's one thing you can do so you can find gratitude in your own life. 
Right, you know? exactly. And I, I think a lot of people, they lose that sense of gratitude in life. And that's how they start hating the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think it's important. Like Dr. Marissa on Thursdays, um, I'm her co-host for now. Um, I do gratitudes in the morning with her. Yeah. Right? So every morning she wake up and she calls it the gratitude sandwich, which is like the first top, the first part of the bun. Um, you say eight things that you're grateful for in life, but like she doesn't want you to be like, oh, family, you know, like literally anything like, oh, I'm grateful for hot showers. Like imagine not having hot showers. Oh, I'm yeah. grateful for coffee in the morning. I'm grateful for having shoes or like a car so I can drive to work, you know, like, you know, she really wants you to think about it. not oh, I'm, ha- I'm I'm grateful for my friends like that's off the top like we yeah. all know that you know and then on the bottom of the bun um, it's eight things that you appreciate about yourself okay right because if you're always looking for an outside source giving you compliments then you start to deteriorate mm-hmm. you know but if you start giving yourself compliments and appreciating what and like what affirmations you do, and things, affirmations yeah. then you don't need you don't need anyone else to to make you yeah. who you are, you know, to make you be happy. So, and I, that's one thing that I'm actually grateful for, for understanding, you know, like when people pray, a lot of times people pray because they need help, mm-hmm. you know, but most people don't pray because they're grateful. Yeah. You know, so that, that's how I always start all my prayers. I, um, I do my introduction and then I, and it's not repetitive, but it's, it's structured. You know, yeah. so the first thing I do is I thank God for everything. And I start talking about things I'm grateful for. And then I and then I apologize for all my sins, you know, ask for forgiveness. And then then I go in and be like, this is what I need from you. Like, I need help, you know, to grow mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, you know, everything financially. And then I get all into it. Um, but I, I try to do that every every day, you know. Yeah. Keeps, keeps me keeps me sane. And another thing is I've been watching Suits lately, right? That's I, an amazing show, too. You like it? When Okay, you know that show is 10 years old? Yeah. Uh-huh. Did you see it when it first came I out? I saw it when it first came out, so I got to rewatch it, but yeah. Really? See, I just started watching it. And there's so many shows out there that have been on the air for so long, and now they're just getting popular. Yep. And Suits is one of them. Um, and so I started watching that. And if you guys don't know what Suits is, go look it up. I'm just kidding. It's like Lawyers basically yeah for the most part and so like i got inspired because i see and it's a show it's funny but i'm still taking it all the way but they're there from sun up to sundown yeah you know they're they're dressed to the t in their suits and it's already like they're on like this top building floor looking out in the city and i'm like man that's so cool like that's so professional and i dig it you know and it's like so i want to start you know you gotta what's that saying Become who you want to be. Like, how do you see yourself? Yeah. And then just start acting that way, and then you'll start to become that person, you know? You know what's crazy is I know a guy like that. Like, really? the main character. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, Harvey Specter? Uh-huh. Okay, and, like, what, personality, or? No, he could pick up a book, read it. He's a master. Oh, Mike Ross. So he has, yeah, uh, yeah. what is that, mine? Uh, photographic memory. For- photographic memory. Yeah. Yeah. He has that? Really? That's yeah. that's crazy because if you see something like drastic though, you're scarred. Yeah. So it's a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. You know, I knew this one um, girl in my class. She had photographic memory, but she told me she only had two hours. Like she she can everything that she sees in two hours. Like it like she's you know photographic memory, but then it'll start to fade away. Yeah, so, I got that too. Really? Yeah. So like before a test, you just. Doop, doop, Flip your pages and then you're good for two hours. It's about like a day and a half for me. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a day and a half of photographic memory. Yeah, yeah it's about like a like. I usually don't study, but I study like the night before. Uh huh. And I'll ace any test I want. Really? Yeah. But here's the downside. I, I, I'm also dyslexic. Oh no! <laughs> so like I go into the test like super confident, but you go on the test backwards. And then I, I <laughs> yeah, and I had a failing test because I overthink. English tests or what? I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> no, like any test. Like no kidding, because so, you're second guessing yourself. Because I I always second guess myself, and then I I always get like C B's in, in tests. Because like no kidding. Yeah. You psych yourself <laughs> out, even though you have this incredible. It's, well, well, because then I start reading it, then I get nervous, and then it gets all jumbled up, and I get irritated and then your memory is just false because it's so scrambled <laughs> and then it's like am i remembering this correctly maybe i am maybe i'm not <laughs> maybe i'm not maybe it was that chapter and right it, it goes downhill no kidding it's <laughs> yeah. just a snowball effect yeah that's really crazy all right you guys we're gonna be taking a five minute break i hope you guys enjoy um listening to us on kca radio 1050 am and express 106.5 fm i'm sam works i'm kyle kerrigan and I'm Ashley Eagle. Oh, she said her last name too. I thought you were. And we'll be back in about five minutes, guys. So hang tight. Hey, feeling good. Like I should. When in the blue, I'll go around the neighborhood. Feeling blessed. Never stressed. Got the sunshine on my Sunday bed. From the Bureau of Economic Geology, this is Earth Date. In 2014, a landslide began above the Stillaguamish River in Washington. In less than five minutes, it had buried a rural neighborhood. 43 people died, while eight more were carried along and lived to tell the tale. The slide dammed the river, which created a lake two and a half miles long. As violent and frightening as landslides can be, they're a natural part of the constant erosion and reformation of the earth. Most often, erosion is a very slow process, except about 400 times a year when there's a landslide. They can creep downhill at just a few inches a day, or they can build up speed, hitting nearly 200 miles an hour. Landslides can be massive, moving many cubic miles of earth in a single event. The wind they push in front of them can strip the leaves off trees. Landslides require both gravity and water. Natural erosion, or man-made activities like a road cut, can make a slope overly steep or unstable. Too much water from rainfall, snow, or even groundwater can then weaken the internal cohesion of the soil. After that, it's just waiting for a trigger. That could be a natural tremor from an earthquake or even thunder, or it could be man-made, like vibrations from a mining operation or a train. Studies of the Washington slide have helped us better understand all these contributing factors. And as our knowledge of landslides continues to grow, hopefully we'll get better at getting out of their way. I'm Scott Tinker, and thank you for listening. Earth Date is produced by the Bureau of Economic Geology at the University of Texas at Austin. Earth Date is researched by Julie Hennings, written by Harry Lynch, and distributed by Mark Blunt and Casey Walker. For more stories, follow us on Facebook or visit earthdate.org. Tahi Bo Tea Club's original Pure Pal de Arco Super Tea comes from the only tree in the world that fungus does not grow on. As a result, it naturally has antifungal, anti-infection, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-inflammation, and anti-parasite properties. So the tea is great for healthy people because it helps build the immune system, and it can be truly miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. The tea is also organic and naturally caffeine-free. A one-pound package of tea is $49.95, which includes shipping. To order, please visit TeheboTeaClub.com. Tehebo is spelled T like Tom, A-H-E-E-B like boy, O. Then continue with the word T and then the word club. The complete website is TeheboTeaClub.com. Or call us at 818-610-8088, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. California time. That's 818-610-8088, TeheboTeaClub.com. It's a bird! It's a plane! No, it's Super Roth! Okay, a gimmicky opening for a commercial about Super Roth Universal Life Insurance, but I'm sure it got your attention. Now, what is a Super Roth, you ask? It's a permanent indexed universal life insurance that's totally liquid and easily accessible once it matures, can be used to supplement retirement savings or a death benefit, or both, has no income or contribution limit, has no five-year rule like Roth IRAs, has no 10% penalty for accessing the funds before age 59 and a half. Oh, and the average historical returns are 5 to 7% annually, tax-free. Super Roths also lock in gains, which means you don't lose your money when the market is down. 
Sounds incredible, right? Sounds super? Super Roths are the way of the future, specifically your future. To see if you qualify for a Super Roth, go online to thesuperroth.com. Bob Vila here with my home improvement tip of the day. For decades now, if you wanted a smooth, resilient finish on a table you were painting, you turned to oil-based paints. They stuck to the finish better than water-based, they left fewer brush marks, and they created a rock-hard finish. But with the drawbacks to oil-based paint, long drying times, more difficult cleanup, along with health and environmental concerns, consumers have been increasingly choosing latex and acrylic paints instead. So, are they selling for a subpar finish? Not anymore. Paint producers have been fiddling with new additives that help water-based paints mimic the good qualities of their oil-based cousins, but without the health concerns. In fact, development of acrylic paints has progressed to the point where many products actually surpass the performance of oil-based. Bottom line, new water-based and acrylics combine the best of two worlds, and that makes them worth a serious look when you're planning your next painting project. Get more info at BobVila.com and right here at home with me, Bob Vila. Welcome back, everybody. Happy Sunday. You're listening to Whatever Works on KCAA, 1050 AM and Express 106.5 FM, the station that leaves no listeners behind. I am your co-host, Kyle Kerrigan. And I'm Sam Works. And uh, just before the half, we were talking to Ashley Eagle. She was talking to us about um, Whiskey Republic. And we talked. We kind of went on a little tangent, talked about Oak Glen. And some of the chari- charity work that we we all did. Yeah, is there is there any charity work that you want to do? Yes. Let's talk about yes. that. What, do, what what's some of the charity work that you want to do? Well, ever since I went to Namibia, I've made it a goal that wherever I travel, I need to give back to that community. Mm. And you do it for two reasons. One, obviously, doing charity work, it's a good thing. You feel good about yourself, and you're less nervous about being there because now you're focused on a task, right? Yeah, you're helping them. Yeah. But, like, just doing anything, like, whether you're working, whether you're doing something, like, there's a task at hand that you (coughs) got to focus on. Mm -hmm. And it kind of takes away, hey, I'm thousands away, miles away from home, I'm hundreds of miles away from home, you know, maybe, you know, just focus on this task. And two, if something were to ever happen... Now, 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 you know, like a group of friends or a group of people that you helped out, and um, basically, you know, it's like a plan B. So now you have point of contact. If you ever were to go back, then you can start exploring with them or you know doing other things. Yeah. So it's like a safety net too, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, if you go out to New Zealand and then you meet some people from there and then get their contact info. And you want to go back to New Zealand in a couple of years, you, you might have a place to stay. You don't have to get a hotel or whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, come back, da, 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 you know? Well, and here's the thing, Sam. Um, whenever you travel somewhere, when I was in Amsterdam, you want to know the biggest reason why some locals hate tourists? Why? Because they just show up, make it everyone's problem, and then leave. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was talking to a tourist in Amsterdam. And actually, it was a business owner. Uh, it was Paul's Burgers because he's from Jersey. And he's like, I'm going to bring the American burger to Amsterdam. And so I was talking to him. I said, hey, what's the biggest mistake tourists do from America? So that's a really good question. So the biggest thing is not talking to the locals. Mm. Or and he said, even deeper than that, not getting to know the locals. Because you could talk to someone, have like a, just a whatever conversation, and then leave. Then you'll f- never remember them. Never see them again, yeah. Never see them again, never remember. 
But if I ask you, like, hey, Sam, you know, where do you live? Do you have family? This, that, this, that. Those barriers start to fall down. This guy isn't a tourist anymore. He's a human like me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you start to get vulnerable. It's, it's all about the vulnerability and, you know, just learning about the human nature of everybody is, like, my goal. Mm. It's to, like, hear as many stories as I can besides my own and see how they relate or how they don't relate to me and see how we can just move forward on our journeys separately but taking in, like, oh, I met Sam on this journey. I'll never forget that. Maybe it was a conversation at a coffee shop. Maybe it was, you know, maybe I was helping him paint this orphanage in Namibia. Or, you know, there was this festival going on in Amsterdam, just sitting next to him at this festival. Like, I'll have that memory, and you'll have that memory of me. Mm. So it's that, like, it's that synergy. It's, it's that we share the same memory even though we don't know mm. each other or maybe I live thousands of miles away. That's 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 what gets me. That's what keeps me going. That's crazy. You should study anthropology, bro. Yeah. You should go to college for that. Because <laughs> if you guys don't know what anthropology is, it's the study of culture yeah. and, like, the, like, society and all that stuff. I did stuff. study – well, I had – I was fortunate enough to go to APU. And so uh, when you go to a religious college, you have to take religious classes. That's just the trade off. So y- so y- so you have your uh you have your general studies then you have your studies for a major and then you have your religious classes you know studying the bible one class i took was called christian life faith ministry and basically what it was was a rundown from when jesus died all the way to the different religions that we have so it started with the baptists and they broke off and then we created this and that catholics you know this and that Martin Luther, how he started, you know, l- you know, Lutheranism, mm. and so it was just learning the culture that way, and you get to learn different, you know, and a lot of cultures embed religion into their own culture, and so I got to learn a lot about Hinduism, Buddhism. Um, I started to get into a little bit of. Um, Judaism a little bit because it's it's the religion that's kind of closest to mine. And just learning about how different cultures and what percentage it's around their religion and what percentage is not. Because mm. if you trace a culture back mm. to when it first started, there's probably a historical figure from where it started, you know what I mean? How it happened and how it got how created. How it happened, yeah. how it got created, and then they started stories or ballads that you teach your kids, and then their kids teach their kids, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. So now it's now it's a culture, you know, like Christmas. You know, different countries believe in Christmas differently. You know, whether it's Germany, whether it's you know Denmark, the U.S. Mexico, um, although Mexico and you know U.S. have the same identity for Santa, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, yeah, it's just the Spanish version, like just speaking, because it's like Catholicism, so it's the same. Mm. It's the same Santa. Right, but like when you say like celebrate Christmas or have the same Santa, I mean we have our like from a religious standpoint, it's different than what like how us americans celebrate christmas right exactly you know like the off religious standpoint of it Mm -hmm. so are you saying like the religious standpoint of it is the same in denmark or like the whole santa claus it's it's different it's different okay so here 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 we like to well going back to christmas specifically here in the u.s we interpret santa into the religion right for the most part. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, like growing up, you know, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus, different things like that. It's still like that in other countries, but they don't stress it. It's just gift giving, per se. Mm. Whereas, like, here, it it's the culture <laughs> that brings it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
whereas, you know, but it's also the U.S. culture, like, you know, you'll never know who you meet. You might meet someone Hindu that also celebrates, you know, but they don't believe or follow that religion. Right. So they participate, but they don't believe in it, in yeah. a sense. So, yeah. How does, since we're talking about holidays... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one Joe. man if, i wish y'all were here live to, <laughs> to see these this notes like, man yeah oh Great. it's crazy um yeah well i mean <laughs> <laughs> i know i can say it, but do i want to say it? i don't know <laughs> especially this cornhole joke that one's funny too um lost my train of thought here. okay so we're, since we're we're coming into the holidays and we're we're skipping Halloween. We're skipping Thanksgiving right now. All right. So we're gonna talk about Christmas. Uh -huh. um, the is it a joy of how, how talking about presents, bro? Here here's my thing. Like, I don't think during Christmas like presents should be the number one focus. You know, every, everyone talks about family. Like family's great, but like yeah. everyone's like, oh, I have to get a present. I have to get a present. I had a f quote unquote like. A family I'll celebrate Christmas with, and they were just giving each other like gift cards or like money yeah. gift cards instead of actual like presents. Yeah. Right. And I was participating at their Christmas thing and I was giving someone actual presents. Yeah. And I found out why they just give each other gift cards. Why is that? Let me ask you something, Kyle. If I give you a gift, and you didn't like it, or whatever the case may be, are you gonna? Wh what would you do with it? You return it. You would no, return it. No, 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 <laughs> oh no. my god! I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, I mean I would keep it. You would keep it. Yeah. Even if you didn't like it. Even if I didn't like it. It was if it was from you. Okay. Well, I did that. I was giving presents to these people, this family. Yeah. And it wasn't what they wanted, in a sense of like they didn't like that stuff. And they flat out told me <laughs> why we're opening presents. You know what's funny is, like, you ever learn about someone's character? It's how they react. And watch them how they react. Really? Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. And they always keep receipts. I was like, I, I always rip off the, the price tag, and I never keep the – well, I don't – not when it comes to clothes, you keep the receipts, right? Because well, it, yeah, it doesn't fit. Because what if it doesn't fit? But, like, like, presents, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they keep receipts because like they're gonna go return and just get money. I'm like, how? Like that's some. Um, that's messed up. That's savage. That's messed up. You know. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> he's like, yeah. well, you know, yeah. I mean, if you don't like the present, <laughs> you know, like I'm gonna get something that's that I a, like. Yeah. It's subjective. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Avoiding disappointment. Yeah. Words from Ferran. Or being disappointed. Or being disappointed. Or being disappointed too. Yeah. And um I don't know, I just I just think it's it's just interesting, you know. You know what my family has always done for Christmas was like a white elephant. And mm. it's always been hysterical. Mm. Cuz like the 5-year-old always gets like the Keurig. And it's the like, Keurig. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like, come on, Sammy, trade up. No, I want to keep this big gift. Okay. It's a cure. Because <laughs> they just think it, the bigger the box, the better the present. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's so, what they're thinking. Yeah, so I've I've like the worst luck. I always get socks. <laughs> you don't you don't like fill <laughs> around or anything? You just <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, you know, while I trade up last minute, I get my gift stolen. Mm. And so like See, at least you make some some joy out of it. Yeah, no, you know? yeah, and it's funny. It's not like a four year old has a cure egg. What are they gonna do with it? Their parents are gonna take it, and they're like, Ooh, you know. Well, one of my aunts was like, you know what? Screw it. Give them the cure egg. And so now, like, my three year old cousin has a cure egg. No one else uses it. No, no one else uses it. It's his. <laughs> <laughs> Asking their mom to buy pods and stuff. Yeah. Like, I need some cure egg pods. <laughs> I mean, they don't know what that is, but they ask for they ask his permission to use it because it's his. No, oh, that's kind of so cool. So it's just like, you know, and like I always thought that concept was cool because then that teaches them at a young age, you know, 
responsibility a little bit. Like, you have something, you know, will you let other people use it if they mm. ask politely or, like, you know, stuff like that. And so, See, the real test is if you have something that you really like, you know, will you let other people use it? You know, yeah. For me, um, I I find a joy of like books now. Like just the books past are, yeah. past couple years, I started reading books, bro. I used to brag about not ever reading a book before in my life. Like even in school, I cheated my way through. Yeah. Like, I never read a book in my life. I used to brag about that. That's <laughs> embarrassing, bro. So you know. Yeah. But I I started really enjoy reading books and stuff, and now I came like I've been attached to these books because yeah. they're so powerful. But like, what's the point? of like living without sharing. Yeah, exactly. Dude, you can have everything you want in life, a mansion, Lamborghini, all this. What if you had no one in life? Yeah. What, what is it all for? Exactly. You know, so when it comes to these books, like I, I take pride in the books that I read because they're all um, mental, like training books and stuff like that, right, you exactly. know, uh, phil philosophy books. And it was honestly kind of heartbreaking, but like, I give my books away. Okay. You know, my brother, he named his son Aurelius from Marcus Aurelius. Really? And I gave him the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. And I said, listen, you better read this book to your son every night because you named your son after this guy. Yeah. So you better learn who this guy is and teach your son about it. Yeah, that's him, You know? But, like, that book is so powerful, and I didn't want to give it away. I'm like, Ugh. I was like, all right, here you go, you know? You know what my favorite thing is? Is like communities they have like those bookshelves. Yeah, and you, you like you take book, one, you put one, you put, put one, one in. I thought those were always great. Yeah, I actually saw one uh, a couple of days ago, and it was at night, and I was like, oh, I was like looking through the books and stuff. Yeah. S side note, I almost there was a black widow, bro. I, I didn't see it because it was dark, <laughs> <laughs> and I went to go grab this book, and this black widow started crawling everywhere. It was crazy. How much time we got, Joe? We got three minutes. Okay, so anyways, yeah, gift giving is it's such a um, it's a valuable thing. Yeah. But you know something that I learned recently? Huh. All right. If I gave you a gift and you didn't accept it, who gets the gift? I get the gift, right? Yeah. If you're not going to if you're not going to have it, I guess it's mine, right? right Cuz yeah. I got it. Same thing when it comes to emotions, right? Yeah. If someone is mad at you and they're they're pulling out their anger and they want you to get mad and you you stay calm, you don't get mad. Then they get madder. They yeah. get way more madder. They get pissed off. Yeah. Because you didn't accept it. Yeah. Just as if you didn't accept the gift. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, like, when it comes to tangible things or when it comes to emotional things, you know, I, I try to look at, try to find the similarities of it all, you know? And uh, I, dude, some people get spiteful because they're mad and they want you to be mad. But if you're not, if you're not accepting their quote unquote president of evil or, or madness, yeah. Dude, they do some they do some spiteful stuff, dude. They do. just because you're not mad. Just because you're not feeling what they're feeling. Yeah. You know. But on the flip side, same you can do the same thing with happiness. Yeah, that's true. You know, you can give happiness away and even if someone doesn't accept it, which everyone should. You yeah. know, if I want to give you a hug, don't just stand there. Give me a hug back, you know? Yeah. But I'm not going to. You're going to force it. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> All right, you guys. You guys listen to Whatever Works. We're finishing up here. I'm your host, Sam Works. I'm Kyle Kerrigan. And so stick around for the Ferran Show. I don't. What's the title, though? The Ferran, Ferran Dozier, Dozier Show. Yes. Stick around, guys. That's going to be happening in five minutes. Have a good night. Despite the challenge All you gotta do is leave it better than you found it It's gonna get difficult to stand but hold your balance I just say whatever cause there is no way you're bound Everyone falls down sometimes But you just gotta know it'll all be fine It's okay uh -huh. It's okay of a thousand words begins here. KCAA. Educate.